Hello everyone! In today's class, we're going to deal with some vocabulary exercises for Module 1. And more exactly, exercises about jobs, lifestyle, characters, education, phrasal verbs, and some personality adjectives. Now, I want you to have a look at the given pictures and label them with the following words. The plumber, a civil engineer, a pedodontist, an accountant, a laborer, and an apprentice. Think of that, please. And here are the answers. So the first picture is that of an accountant. The second one describes what an apprentice does. The third one are the pictures of a civil engineer. Then you have the laborer, the pedodontist, and lastly, the plumber. Now, let's deal with some exercises. Character and personality adjectives. Use the word below to complete the sentence. You have to complete them with the words in red, which are skinned, spoken, sensible, going, tempered, minded, headed, and hearted. While I read, Try to think which is the best answer and the best option for each of them. Then, we're going to confirm the right answers together. So, the first sentence. Philip doesn't accept other people's ideas. He's rather narrow. Paul didn't get upset after his boss shouted at him. He's very easy. Michelle's really cold. Yesterday, she refused to give a homeless man any change. In such cases, Please read all the sentence till the end of it, so then you can have a better idea of what you have to put in the gaps. Richard is soft. He has a quick, gentle voice. Sandra can be quick at times. She often gets angry for no particular reason. Pamela is quite a big person. She thinks she is smarter than she actually is. He is thick. He isn't easily upset by criticism. Wendy always makes good decisions. She's very and mature for her age. Now, did you think of them while I was reading? Let's confirm the answers together. The first word is minded, which results in narrow-minded. The second one is going, which makes the adjective easygoing. Then it's hearted, resulting in cold-hearted. You have spoken, and it is soft-spoken. You have tempered, quick-tempered. Then you have big-headed, thick-skinned, and the last one, sensitive. Now, regarding lifestyle and education, I want you to have a look at the questions and try to underline the correct word for each of them. Try to do that while I'm reading, however, we're going to confirm the sentences together. The first one. Author worked in a bookshop for 35 years, then quit, retired, discontinued or abandoned, and lived off his pension. Second one. Julie holds a vacancy, chair, post, situation as a nurse in a children's hospital. My sister deals, directs, controls, or runs her own business, making clothes for children. Mr. Hurley doesn't make us work long hours. He's a fair trainee, worker, employer, or employee. Due to the scandal, Tim had to dismiss, resign, fire, or sack from his position as a CEO. The second exercise. Please correct the words to make the compound nouns. So, you say exchange fee or program, school advisor or school lever, distance year or distance learning. You say gap program or gap year, career lever or career advisor, tuition fees or tuition learning. Now, look at the correct answers for each of them. The first one is retired. The second is to hold a post as a nurse. The third 
is a fair employer. Please remember the difference between an employer and an employee. If you work for somebody, then you're an employee. The person you work for is your employer. The fourth one, um, no, the fifth one. So due to the scandal, Tim had to resign from his position as a CEO. And in the second exercise, the following collocations are exchange program, school liver, distance learning, you have gap year, careers advisor, and tuition fees. The second or the next exercise is about the phrasal verbs. Now, you have to complete the gaps with the words out of, on, out, down, on again, and by, so that you can have a full phrasal verb. We have run money. We've spent it all. So, the gap should be with run, and it should mean have no more. Bob's been putting money for his holiday all year. He saved over 600 pounds, and the phrasal verb should mean save. He took a loan to buy his new car. It should mean borrow money from a bank. If he leaves his job, what is he going to live? Which should mean have enough money to support yourself. She spends too much money. She must cut luxuries. And it should mean to reduce. And the last one, please fill an application form and leave it with the secretary. And it should mean complete. Do you have an idea of the words? Now, here are the correct answers. Let's find them out. The first phrasal verb should be run out of money, so that it means have no more of them. The second one is put money by, and it means save. The third one is took out, which means borrow money from a bank. The fourth one, live on, and it means have enough money to support yourself. Cut down on means to reduce. And the last one, you fill out an application, which means you complete an application. This was all we had prepared for you today. Thank you everyone for your attention.